Are you a feminist? Said Sophia. Absolutely. If, you know, depending on whether you're going by the, the stupid definition of people that don't understand it or the actual one. Do you have big hands? Yeah, disgusting hands. Can I have a null nickname? I don't understand. Like, are you a feminist? No? What the f What does that mean? Feminists suck. It's happening right now. I'm not even getting into this. Wow. Okay. Um, can I have a cool nickname? Not now. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's start that now. No, no. Will Dan ever make a huge video about how in the last two years, as a result of things like Gamergate and other things, feminism has gone from being a perfectly understood concept to almost being this joke that people circle jerk against out of a place of complete misunderstanding and ignorance about what it is and why it's important. Just like when when jokes about things that are funny and go too far end up you know, going into, you know, what, take an ignorant person and take an important issue, then take jokes about the important issue and then put, you know, you have someone who has the knowledge about the important issue and the jokes and gets them both. And then you have someone that doesn't understand the important issue and then just hear the jokes. And then it's kind of like their entire perception of it is just the jokes and how honestly like terrifying and dangerous that is and it just makes me panic about the future of humanity um so i'm gonna go mm -mm, you get your hair cut i'm a lad that uh i'm a lad look at look at me saying i'm a boy and boys have short hair so boys have to doesn't matter what your gender is you can have whatever hair you want if you're someone with a short hairstyle you need to get it cut frequently god we're all so brainwashed with our language, aren't we? Um, no, I, yeah, as someone with a short hairstyle, I have to get it cut frequently. You know, it's just me. Are you a nihilist? I'm not, I'm not, I'm, no, I'm more of an existentialist. I think that nihilism, which is kind of like the belief in nothing and doom and gloom, uh, circles back to existentialism, which means that if you're a, a nihilist and you believe that nothing has any meaning, if nothing has any meaning, therefore there's no rules that need to be followed, your human behavior, you know, society, it's all irrelevant because nothing has any meaning. What that means is that everything has equal meaning because if nothing has any meaning or any reason for existing, then everything has equal meaning, which means that if you choose something, or if you like something, then that has meaning. So there's no, you know, for me, it's not about being hopeless. It's kind of like, the inspiring thing that, you know, if you're an existentialist, you think that whatever you believe in is, you know, what's important. Because if nothing has any meaning, then it's up to you to just decide what's important to you. And that is exciting. So you see what I mean? It's like, it sounds very doom and gloom, but it comes from a wholesome place. So it's, it's, it's that dichotomy of everything being pointless and therefore also inspiring uh, love thy neighbor and enjoy holding doors open for people. That's what I'm all about, to be honest. <laughs> it's something that I, I think it's an important philosophical point that we all have to consider is that altruism as a concept is pretty rubbish. Altruism is the idea that you should do things that help other people and not feel good about it. Like you should just do it because, and like you, you should just do it because, but the idea that you shouldn't feel good about being nice is rubbish. And, you know, it's one of those things that puts too much pressure on people's mental health. You know, if you do nice things for your friends, if you do nice things for your family, if you're a friendly person out about in your public, if you do something to help out charities, then you should feel happy and proud of that. Because, you know, people, there, people generally in society, we're way too harsh on ourselves. People are really hostile to each other. People are always trying to bring each other down and find anything to be whatever so you know if you even if it's holding a door open for somebody you should just take a moment to think and you know what i like that i was nice to another person so don't let anybody say don't feel good about that bake sale that you did for whatever reason <laughs> dan you're weird i am weird but what is weird what is normal is normal 
biologically and evolutionary what a human would behave like or is it that just in our modern society there's all these expectations and roles and normal is just the average of that in which case being weird which is kind of sticking out of that i don't see how that's a bad thing at all it's a, it's a cool thing we're learning about the reproductive system in a mixed class i think that's good schools that divide people via gender it doesn't make any sense it's like, what, what you're trying to do there, stop people from being distracted by sex and romance. Firstly, non-straight people exist. Secondly, toxic uh, masculinity in all male schools and the, the, the horribleness that is girls being mean to each other in all girls schools is probably worse. And I think that, you know, people of either gender learning about how the opposite sexes bodies work is a good thing. You know, if, if more boys knew about how menstruation worked, and more girls understood how male puberty worked, life would be less confusing, especially as a teenager, where everything is just terrifying and confusing. What about when you're asexual? That's fine. You know, you can, you can have any sexual identity you want. It's okay. You can feel as, as specifically sexual or non-specifically sexual as you please. Hi Dan, can I be pansexual and asexual at the same time? You can, you don't have to define it. You know, there's lots of words and words can be good. You know, there's a million words for genders. There's a million words for sexual. And they, the, what they can be good for, these labels, are for helping you to understand your feelings. Because if you see a description of something written down, you can think, that's how I feel. Maybe you're a panromantic asexual, which means, you know, I, I can feel attraction to genders, but I don't feel particularly sexual. Maybe it's just at this point in my life, maybe that'll change in 10 years, and that's just a, a way to do it. I know that some people argue that sexuality and all these labels and definitions are different things, but we don't even know what sexuality means. So, there we go. Yes, but what if I change my mind? That's okay, you know, honestly. You know, on, on one hand, you don't have to label yourself. A lot of Tumblr, they, you know, they make you feel like I need to ta label myself with these complicated labels to be cool. You don't have to. If you want to just be a formless blob, a mess that struggles to define themselves from moment to moment, that's also okay. You can say, I feel like all my friends and family and people at school are pressuring me to get into relationships, but I feel internally like I identify as asexual because I don't feel like I'm about that. And then maybe, who knows, in five years, you'll want to date somebody that's fine. You can label yourself to tell people what kind of personality you have right now if you want, or not if you feel like you want to change your mind. It's okay. It's cool. If you, if you're somebody that's making fun of your problems, that that's a really good thing because it shows that firstly you acknowledge issues and that you accept them and that you don't take life too seriously and you're not judging yourself too harshly. I think people that ironically joke about things um, and themselves, and whatever. They're the kind of people that are quite honest with themselves, and that's a good thing. Queer is a good umbrella term. It is, for basically... I, I, I like that as a word for just everything that isn't normative, which is, you know, straight, white, cis males. <gasps> the opposite of the current society privilege. Um, as an umbrella term for people who maybe aren't represented or treated as fairly that society should work on representing more. Indeed. It just doesn't make any sense, doesn't it? I mean, people, humanity over time, we've managed to make a bunch of things make sense, but 12 a.m. and p.m. makes no sense. Like, honestly, just like, who did that? Let's find them and let's break their legs. Time is just a concept. Yeah, it is. But I mean, lots of things are concepts. So is morality and language and purpose take away concepts and we're just biological beings that want to eat and have sex and kill things that threaten the things that we want to eat and have sex with so you can reject your concepts and get all uppity about that or you can accept that concepts are fun I'm just putting that out there <laughs> mm. Dan, do you- oh my god, this chat is so fast. Do you respect non-binary people's pronouns? Yeah, I mean, I think that people- I mean, gender is a construct. Oh, back with the constructs. Sex is biological. Gender doesn't mean anything. What is gender? Like, honestly. 
call yourself a freaking banana. I don't care. Just be comfortable with who you are. Humans and their constructs. You know, we, we did so well with time. Time was a great one, right? We, like, whoever did time, that was a winning. Gender, not so much. We've, we've ended up with a lot of problems with that. You know, time, you know, we know when we're late. We know when something that we're dreading is coming up, you know, like homework deadline. We've got a vague concept of when we might eventually die. You know, there are some, some downsides to the construct of time. But I think overall, it's a pretty good concept. Someone, someone wise said to me, which is that you, you are happy when you feel like you're being authentic. So if you know who you are on the inside, and that is the who you are that you're portraying on the outside. Well, it's, you know, it's one of the things that can make you feel at ease, or rather that if, if you feel like the person you're portraying on the outside isn't wholly reflecting who you are on the inside, that can be a source of stress and anxiety. You, know, you, you might be in a friend group that you don't feel like you vibe with, you feel like maybe you can't express yourself because of the situation that you're stuck in, maybe your family, and it's that whole thing where you feel like, I need to be who I am. And you know, that could that could be coming out, it could be dyeing your hair. It's important that all of you try to not, not not be someone who, like, in a negative way, but just to aspire to be, to communicate the person that you are on the inside. Which for me isn't a big deal, but, uh, you know, changing my name to Daniel Howell just to uh, turn, turn your part. Look at me just being a weirdo, like...